Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Frenzy Extra. I'm Andy Lacombe, coming to you this week from Assumption College, where the Greyhounds are getting set for their final regular season game against AIC, a game we will see on Charter TV 3 on Saturday. But before we get to any of that, let's talk high school football and the playoffs. The matchups are now set for this weekend. Shrewsbury and St. John's in Division Two. It is a rematch of a thriller that was played here at Assumption and will be played again here Saturday night at Assumption College. Algonquin and Wachusett, it is a regular season rematch as well, won by the Tomahawks. This game, though, is at Lane Field on the mountaintop. Tantasqua and Marlboro in Division 2A. That's a four versus one matchup with Doherty and Neshoba rounding out the 2A matchups. Quabbin and Grafton. Quabbin coming to town with a high-powered offense, but Grafton's athletes are tough. That'll be a good one. St. Peter Marion and Auburn also in Division 3. That should be a rock fight. Teams that have not played yet in the regular season. Division 3A, Holy Name and Nipmuc. Rematch from a couple of weeks ago, won by Holy Name. Also, Sutton makes the playoffs. They're taking on the high-powered Uxbridge Spartans. To Division 4, Bartlett. Coming back with a couple big weeks, they're in, but they draw the powerful West Boylston Lions. Leicester, they will go to Littleton in Division 4 in what should be a competitive game. Division 4A, Assabet Valley and Maynard. Maynard, the number one seed, they have been tough to stop all year long. The Aztecs get that test in the first week of the playoffs. And St. Bernard's and Blackstone Valley Tech could be some points put up on the board in Upton for that one. All right, so you have the matchups. Now let's talk to some of the teams. Wachusett and Algonquin should be a great game. The Mountaineers still stinging a little bit from the loss to the T-Hawks in the regular season. And now the green and white chomping at the bit to get another shot at Algonquin. That was a pretty good win for us uh, after our loss to Algonquin. That was pretty good for us to bounce back and be able to pull a win. Good to get back on track, you know, no matter who you really play. I'm good to, you know, Get the offense going again. The defense played well. Uh, just played good football. Algonquin's our rival in all sports, and losing to them was kind of tough. But uh, beating GD was, uh, well, regardless, any team was a great step forward. There's a lot more intensity in practice today, knowing that we're in the playoffs and knowing that we can play Algonquin again. They hung the one loss on us for the regular season, but uh, it's just another game. It's playoffs, and it's got to play our brand of football and do it for four quarters and get a win. They're a good team and we're going to have to play really well to beat them, but definitely happy we get to play them again. We treat every other game the same way. You know, we're not going to change our practice, you know, resume for anything, but uh, we bring it every week, no matter whether it's preseason, regular season, or playoffs. So we're ready to go no matter what. To Division Three, the Quabbin Panthers offense has been outstanding. They've put up almost 100 points in our last two games combined. And those last two games, essentially playoff type games for the Panthers. They needed wins to get to this point. They now draw the number one seed in their division, Grafton, but they already feel, Quabbin does, like they've been battle tested. Going into the year, we were all pretty optimistic because of last year's down year, but I knew we had a bunch of young kids coming in, different kids starting to switch the program up, and we're trying to create a new culture here at Quabbin, and we're going to be a winning program for years to come. We're finally respected in the school, I feel, and that's what and that's huge because my first two years we weren't really respected. You know, we had a popular field hockey team and everything, but now, now we're finally winning, and it's just it's good to bring a winning atmosphere into Quabbin, and and I think it's carried over into other sports, and and I think people genuinely care about sports more in Quabbin, and I think that's that's a big fact, that's a big thing that we didn't have a few years, a few years ago. As a group of guys, we like each other, and we're hanging out, we're laughing. It's really building a culture around the program. Everyone was pumped up. We scored our first offensive drive, and then that carried over into defense. And where we were struggling on defense, we finally made a stop, and that just and that just got everyone pumped up. And then going into halftime with a lead was just huge. And then we, you know, we just carried out the intensity and the energy the whole game. North Norfolk put up a great fight, and it was intense. I loved the atmosphere, and I'd love to see what we're going into next week. Highlights from the playoffs coming your way on the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Friday night at 1025 on Charter TV 3, channel 193. Time for a quick break. From here at Assumption, we send it back to the studio. Kevin Shea and Jim Wilson break down week one of the playoffs. Stay with us. Coming up this week on the Friday Night Football Frenzy. 
in the Division II semifinal, the Algonquin Tomahawks visit the Wachusett Mountaineers. In Division III, the St. Peter Marion Guardians look to advance as they visit the Auburn Rockets. In Division IV, the West Bulletin Lions host the upset-minded Bartlett Indians. And in Division IIA, Doherty goes on the road as the Highlanders visit Neshoba, the Frenzy on Charter TV3. The Frenzy is presented by Bay State Savings Bank and the Worcester Railers Hockey Club. Welcome back, everyone, to the Frenzy Extra. Kevin Shea, Jim Wilson, and we are breaking down the playoffs, talking playoff games. Already really. here. Already here. November, October's in the rearview mirror. The regular season's in no the rearview mirror. No more power mirror. ratings, no more calls from Mike Ross. And you know, <laughs> what, what, well, what how uh, did we beat Littleton? Buddy. And Littleton's ahead of us. Are we playing Dave ratings. Proudy or Bartlett? What, what's going on? <laughs> I love it. All right, we're going to start with Division Two. And the rematch game, they're both rematch games, but St. John's and Shrewsbury, this is a rematch from a month ago. Uh, that game was played on a Friday night at Assumption College. This one will be played on Saturday night at Assumption College. I love this rematch. I love the way both teams are playing. I think St. John's, and talking to one of their coaches, they're playing their best football right now. And uh, that's anyone who's watched their last two games, watched the, the Lemonster game. They shut out Lemonster. They dominated Lemonster. And then last week, Huge win over Algonquin. This is a team right now that is really hitting their stride. And I think more than anything else, it starts up front on the defensive line. Uh, when you look at the St. John's team and you look at Flynn McGilvery, you look at Hunter Gorgas, and you look at Tommy Farako. They played a monster game against Lemonster. They played a monster game against Algonquin, pressuring the quarterback, hunkering down against the run, and getting their arms up. They're big, tall kids getting their arms up in the passing lanes. It's hard to throw over them. Exactly. I think you look at we, we're talking about the rematch. I mean, what can what can I don't think Shrewsbury's playing the same team. I mean, they, they've outscored their opponents 76 to 14 the last two games against good teams like Lemonster and Algonquin. So as long as you can buy, they're just they're ever since that loss to Wachusett, they've been turned up and they're ready to go. And like you said, that defense has it's learned a lot. I don't think Shrewsbury gets surprised them a lot with what they can do because they've seen a lot of stuff. You get that defensive line, and you're young, young skill players at Shrewsbury, they're going to be tested again. And one of the things with the St. John's offense, and you know, early in the season, people said, well, what's, what's wrong with the offense? This is a very complicated offense. It's a college offense. It takes a long time to learn. And you have all new guys in there. I think nine new starters on offense this year coming in. You, it's not something you can just go practice it for two weeks and then go out in a game and, and you're running it like it's like it's nothing you've been running it all your life. There's pre-snap reads, there's post-snap reads. Uh, Greg Blondin, the longtime wide receiver coach, has done a phenomenal job with the receivers in working with them on their post-snap reads. I mean, this is something that's it's not line up here. You're going to run a down and out. You're running a skinny post. This is if it's man, you're running this. If it's zone, you're running this. If it's Cover two, you're running this. So they have to break their routes off according to what they see pre-snap, according to what they see post-snap. Steve Bacaglia, the quarterback, has to read it as well. They all have to be on the same page. Greg Blondin's done a great job with the wide receivers. The entire offense, Chris Moriarty's done a great job. Uh, mentoring, too, Steve Bacaglia, who's done a phenomenal job. The way they're playing right now with this offense is they're in rhythm, they're in sync, and they're all on the same page. Exactly. I think that's what's going to pay off for St. John's. They're playing the best football they have been all season, and this is exactly what you want to in the playoffs. And they, it's, it's not like, what do we have to do to beat this team? It's what do we have to do to beat St. John's. Right. And when you look at Shrewsbury now, Shrewsbury, the first time they played a month ago, Shrewsbury had three sophomores starting on the offensive line. Now they've gotten healthy on the O-line again. Now they have seniors back at their positions on the O-line. So what you're going to have now is you're going to have a little bit of a rotation. That's going to be huge in this game because this is going to be a game, I think, like the, like the other one, the first time they met. It's going to be one in the second half and probably in the fourth quarter. And it's going to come down to who has more left in the tank. And the fewer guys you have playing both ways and playing the entire game both ways, the better off you're going to be. And remember, Shrewsbury at the first game, they were up at the half. Yep. You know, they, St. John's had to score 30 points in the second half to get that win. So Shrewsbury knows they can play with these guys. They just have to sustain it for four quarters. They're coming, they're coming off a must-win game against Lemester, one of those win-or-go-home type games. They came up big, so they're playing well, too. So they're confident. And I think they're looking at that rematch. They, they're a little, they want to know they can play with these guys. Right. And one of the things they learned in that first game was they learned they could play with St. John's. And in, I think probably in that locker room, they probably feel like they should have won that game. That's so there's the a lot of self-confidence. Right. They grew as a team. They grew in confidence. You look at uh, John Aloisi, what he's done with this team. Phenomenal job coaching with this team, and they've done a great job executing. And last week's win against Lemonster is a perfect example of that. They just played fantastic. Jared Godick's been moved. He was on the O-line. Moved him back to tight end, which is kind of his natural position. Now, 
As a quarterback, your tight end is your best friend. It's a high percentage pass, generally speaking. You usually have a size advantage, whether it's against a safety or a linebacker. You might have the speed advantage. I think he's going to play a big key role in this game for Drew Campanelli and that Shrewsbury offense because it's no secret anyone who's playing St. John's wants to control the ball, control the time of possession, and give St. John's fewer possessions. You don't want to give them six or seven possessions a half. You want to give them three or four. Right, exactly. That's about keep them off the field. They can't hurt you. But then they always end up doing it. Right. I mean, half the problem is you, you, you're playing the mystique, not only you know, football, basketball, baseball, you're playing the mystique of St. John's. And that's right. what they got to sort of, and they, I think they've sort of gotten through that, knowing they can play with them. And like I said, they're making those, those adjustments. They want, you know, if they, that rush comes in, they're going to do a quick dump off to the tight end, try to get that offense going, get on the get long sustained drives, get that, get that offense off the field. In the other Division two matchup, another rematch we talked about, it's, uh, it's Wachusett and Algonquin. Now, this is a game that they just played each other two weeks ago. Algonquin with a huge win yep. on a Sunday night, uh, program win, statement win for them. But th that game was at Algonquin. This game's at Wachusett. How much does home field advantage matter in this contest? The Badlands is getting ready for. They got the uniform. They got their, their, their costumes already picked out. They're ready to go. It's it's a big, like you said, it's a big. This is a, this is a win that Justin McKay has been looking for from this program for years. It's it's probably the best win he's had. We talked about it last a couple weeks ago. This is probably going back 20 years before Mall and Eddie, because you know this yeah. is one of those. You know, great. This, this is why I've been telling you all year. You know, you finally listened to the plan. We beat Watchus it, and you know. But the problem is now Watchus is ready for him. They know it's gonna be it's a, it's a revenge game for him. These two teams match up really well. I think it's a, it's a good. You know, it's almost like a mirror image on both sides of the ball. They both like you know punishing on the ground game. They can throw if they need to. Good defenses on both sides. So I think just well, Gonkwa is ready for it, and you know, problem is now Watchus it knows what to expect. Right. And it's two teams, as you mentioned, it's two teams that uh, run to set up the pass. Yeah. And, and if they don't have to pass, they won't pass at all. But they both have capable quarterbacks. I love Fiorelli for Wachusett, and I love Ryan Barry Barry. for Algonquin. I think they both – What one thing that stands out when you watch these two guys is poise. They both have poise, and they have command of the huddle and command of the offense. And there's that leadership position. When you're playing quarterback, you're thrust into a leadership position, whether you want to be the leader or not. Guys look to you. The offensive line looks to you. The skill guys look to you. How are you handling the game? Whether you're up or down, the emotions of the game, you have to be level-headed. This is a game that's going to be very emotional. Yeah. I think these two quarterbacks are going to be key to settling their team down, getting them focused, not on extracurriculars, maybe not on chin-wagging, but just do your job, play assignment football, and let's just keep moving the chains. Exactly. I think that's a big key is just emotions because I think both teams are going to be keyed up for this game. Uh, you know, Justin Justin's a Wachusett assistant for once upon a time, right. I think. you got the big rematch because I know Wachusett, that's their perfect season gone down the drain from a loss to Algonquin. Algonquin wants to prove that wasn't a fluke. They're for real. They should be in the same conversation as these top teams in Division Two. Yep. There were some locker room shenanigans last time. <laughs> so I think it's just, you know, I think it's going to be a good, it's a good game. I think teams are going to be keyed up. Problem is you don't want to get started off on the wrong foot and just get too keyed up, and then all of a sudden right. now you give up big, big play and it's swung the other way. You're trying to play on your heels the rest of the game. Right. Division 2A, Marlboro Tantasco. Again, two great coaches here. One thing I love about Sean Mahoney, and I've said this before, he is one of the greatest high school football coaches. He Each year he has different types of players and tip, players with different strengths. He moves his offense and caters his offense to his players, not the other way around. He doesn't say, this is the way we play. You guys have to fit right. into, this, into this system. He says, okay, these are our strengths. Now let's tailor our offense around who we have and what their strengths are. He is a phenomenal, uh, he was a quarterback, but a phenomenal offensive coordinator, teacher of the game to his quarterbacks and his offensive unit. And they're, they're very diverse, and they always are. They can run option one week. They'll run power football another week. They'll run pro set formation and, and run a run pass option and throw the ball over the place. Then they'll run play action. They can beat you in so many different ways. Now, a lot of teams, when they try to do it all, it's a jack of all trades, master right. of none. You, you can't do anything really well. This Marlboro team always, each and every year, with different names, different faces, always seems to have a great mastery of that offense and a versatile offense. And you can see, you know, I saw them last week running the option against Doherty. And then, you know, because they're trying to isolate a, a defensive end or trying to isolate an outside linebacker and key on him. Then when the defense switches to that, now they're going to throw a backside screen. Now they're going to throw some play action at you. So they always have the defense on their heels. It's a credit to Sean Mahoney. Exactly. And I think, you know, like you said, they have 
they have players like Owen Cabadonna and you know Luke Goulet, guys who are you know you look at them and they okay these aren't going to be superstars, but they get the job done and they're going to run for a thousand yards each. They're really they're really talented, and I think they, they, they're just what he needs to do if they get those wins. They're, they're nobody really talks about them. That's probably our fault more than anything else because they've had some good quality wins yeah. this year. They belong in the conversation. Like you know they're going to be one of the best teams in Division Two A. They could probably compete in Division Two. Yeah, they probably could. Now Neshoba Doherty is the other Division Two A matchup. Uh, this is a good one as well. And you look at these two teams, and, and uh, Doherty, I think, made a statement opening week when they played Lemister. Right. Very, very tough tooth and nail. This is a team that has confidence in themselves, and this is a team that's shown they can come back in a game. That once, if they get behind, they don't lose their poise or composure, and they don't deviate from the game plan. Meanwhile, no one runs the wing tee better than Neshoba. Year in and year out, no one runs it better. You know what's coming but you can't stop it because their guards and their tackles pull so well, they have quick feet, and they run a nice rotation of running backs at you. Everyone's fresh, everyone runs hard, and they finish their runs. They're not trying to get out of bounds, they're not trying to juke and jive. North-south, lower your headgear and shoulder pads, run someone over. Exactly, they're one of those typical teams, different here every week. It's not like, you know, they're all, like, we were talking about Grafton in a couple of minutes. It's like, oh, how you stop men and following in the right. shoulder. It's like, they have a different guy every week, Jake Fire, and Man, 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 yeah, Man Sauer. They're gonna be just, you know, come at you, and, and like you said, here's what we're doing. Try to stop it. Right. I mean, you know, there's no, be no tricks. I mean, aside from that fake field goal. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, I think. No, it's and, true. And Dory's a good team. They're young and they've had some good wins so yeah. far. They're going to be tested. I know Tejan Vassar is going to be one of the best players to watch in the next couple of years. I mean, yeah. he's, he's, he's going to get, get the job done for him. The show was really worried about how to stop him. JJ Early, another guy, yeah. playmaker. They, so they have, Dory has their playmakers. But can, you know, is Neshoba going to match up with them and shut them down and try to, you know, can Dean Doherty stop Neshoba? Right. Now, Division Three, and this is what we talked about, Grafton and Quabbin. Best player in Central Mass, bar none, is Ifatu Melifonwu. He is phenomenal. No one can stop him. Let's just say that right now. So, Quabbin, their big directive this week is how do you try to put a parachute on Melifonwu? Because you're not going to stop him. How do you slow him down? That's the problem. Quabbin all year, I mean, they, they can't be trading points. Now it's from their defense is is leaky, at, to put it mildly, because they just you know you know they be guarding in overtime. They had a shootout with no uh, for North Mills. So actually, had North Mills that came back on them last week. They need and and the problem is Grafton's way too good to, because they're not going to be able to trade. Their right. defense is too good. They got Sam Dealy and you know Jack Fontana. Mm -hmm. Those guys are going to be able to you know match up well with the Quab and weapons. And they're not so they're not going to be okay. Well, they score. We'll just come right down and shoot our, 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 our Madden offense. Right. You know, the three best wide receivers in Central Mass. The quarterback is throwing for you know, 2,400 oh, yards. Offense. You can't. You know, but the problem is, you know, I think Grafton can match up with that and try right. to slow it down a little bit more. Better than Quab and can stop the, the Grafton right. offense. Auburn St. Peter's the other D3 matchup. This is a good one as well. One of the big keys in this game does Steve Saucier play a quarterback for Auburn? Uh, Danny Mom has really come on the last few weeks. He's playing well. He's in sync with his wide receivers and PJ Barry, Joey Powers. This is a good matchup. I like this game. Yeah, I, and I, I like Auburn coming off a 41 0 waxing the week before because, you know, they're just going to be. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think you know Cormier has fed his team all week. I think they're living out in like some hovel in the backyard somewhere and just you know get a couple bones every once in a while. They want them hungry for this game because I know St. Peter Marion wants this game bad because oh, yeah. a win over Auburn is just going to put that team you know in the, in the conversation as you know look at these guys even without Saucy. If they you know they right. want they want to have that statement win for a team that really they they playing tough you know tough and good games but they haven't had that wow they're for real right. kind of game yet you know. And yep. so I think, you know, a guy like Tyler Contoulis and P.J. Barry, that he just set the field goal record for Central Mass, I think, so they know they can score from anywhere they want. Right. Can Auburn, you know, Auburn wants to match up with those guys because yeah, coming off that, that loss to Grafton, they want to show, they, hey, that was just a hiccup sauce. It wasn't available. We had some things going on. We're back to where we are now. All right, we got a minute and a half to get through three oh divisions. Oh, my word. We, Division 3A. You said this wouldn't happen. I know, we'll we did. Fine. We were trying to time it. All right, Sorry, Arch. 3A. Holy name Nipmuc, uh, Holy name beat Nipmuc earlier in the season. What do you see? Nipmuc's banged up. I'm curious if they're going to get healthy because I know Holy name beating them in the last couple weeks. That pretty much put them in the playoffs. It's it, what, what, what Nipmuc team they're going to face. Is it a healthy one or a banged up one? Sutton and Uxbridge. Uh, Sutton, very good team. Uxbridge yeah. with Matt Johnston, Max White Cohen. It's such a great offense and a stingy defense. Exactly. I think it's going to be can Sutton stop you know that the high powered offense. You know they're going to put up 300 yards in passing. Max White Cohen. You know, I think Ryan Daly, this guy's Tucker Harlow, Noah Kraft. They need, you know, it's gonna be, they're gonna be tested, but you know, can they can they match up to it? Division four, West Boylston, Bartlett. What do you see? Can can who can stop Cole McCoubrey? That's right. what's coming out. It's just like if Mellon saw with the Grafton. Can they yep. stop? Can Bartlett stop? Slow him down? That you know, but the problem is nobody else has. That's no. why West Boylston's number one seed. 
Leicester and Littleton. What do you see in this Smash one? Smash mouth game. I like this one. It's going to be a little tough. Leicester, they start off, what, one and four? Yeah. I think they've, they've come back. They've won the last three. They're really, they're, I think they're playing the way they want to now with more. Like Nathan Powers has done a job for them. Uh, Kyle Bedini, another one. I think that's going to be a good one. But, you know, Littleton is a perennial champion, this, so it would be tough to meet that, beat that, too. But you can't never bet against Griff. Division that's 4A, it. we got about 15 seconds. <laughs> Asimut and Maynard, what do you see? Maynard, you know, they're the number one seed for a reason. I think they've seen what Asimut can throw on them with, with Sousa and, 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 uh, and, and those guys that running attack, I think I think Maynard gets this one. St. Bernard's and BVT, and we're going to give Archie much more time next week. Because <laughs> well, you think you're assuming you're going to win. Well, I mean, I'm just, thing. I, I am. St. I am assuming, Archie, I'm assuming you're going to win. I'm, I'm St. Right Bernard's, uh, James Harris right is tough, but I think, I think Valley Tech has the weapons to take this round, too. And they're a complete team, too. Archie's got a complete team. Maybe not some of the big names we've seen in the past, but this is a team that plays very well, all 11 guys together. All right, we're out of time. You need a better alarm on this Next thing. Next week, we will be talking about the second round of the playoffs. More of the Frenzy Extra right after this. Bay State Savings Bank brings you Casasa. What's Casasa? It's a catchy word for earning cash that just might make you want to dance. Get paid for doing simple things you do anyway. That's free Casasa checking. Ask for Casasa by name at Bay State Savings Bank, proud sponsor of the Friday Night Football Frenzy. Welcome back. You know, if you look at the Groton Dunstable football roster, the number 49 really stands out. It is the number of the team's manager. He's never missed a game. He's never missed a practice. And as our Brenna Wilson tells us, the team manager, a big, big part of the Crusader football program. He's missed less practices than some of the guys on the team. He's always here. He's always excited. He's always rooting for us. And when we lose, he might be the most upset kid on the team. Lane McDonald is a sophomore at Groton Dunstable. He was born with cerebral palsy and relies on his wheelchair to get around and an iPad to communicate. Lane is one of the football team's managers and is always there for his teammates. Always brings excitement and if we're all down, he tries to bring us back up. Lane has always been interested in football. When he entered the high school um, and found out he could be part of the football team, that was the first thing he said was, can I be part of it? His family uses a special van that allows all five members to travel together. On October 21st, two companies, Ally and Braunability, and the community came together for a big surprise. I had no idea what I was walking into. The McDonald family was surprised with a brand new wheelchair accessible van during the last home game of the regular season here at Groton Dunstable. And while Mother Nature might have had other plans for the game, the surprise went on as planned. It was pretty powerful. And <laughs> Very overwhelming, very humbling, and um, I think it was at that moment I realized how many people love Lane as much as we do. For that to happen, I mean, really emotional experience for not only the family, but for even our team and the whole community. I mean, it was shared, like hundreds of people shared it from our town and the community, and it was just awesome to bring everyone together. Since he's put in so much time and so much into the program, it finally felt good to give something back to him and so make something to make him happy. It's still very surreal. Um, we have the van now and um, I can't wait to drive it around town with Lane in it. Lane may never step foot on the field during a game, but he's part of a team, a family. See him be part of a team as big as this and just to be welcomed in with open arms and not be looked at for his disability, but just as part of the team, um, it's very overwhelming. It really makes the kids feel good to know that he's there for us unconditionally. You know, that's the reality of it. Uh, he's a part of our program and uh, we're all proud to have him with us. Even if the Crusaders record isn't what they had hoped it would be, they can take comfort knowing they have the constant support of their teammate and friend. He catches every ball with them. He cheers with them. He's upset if they don't make a play, but he believes in them every step. Um, and that's one thing, no matter if they win or lose, Lane believes in them. Brenna Wilson, The Frenzy Extra. Good stuff, thanks Brenna. We'll be back with more of The Frenzy Extra right after this.
hockey fans, Mike Myers here with tracks from your Worcester Railers Hockey Club. The Railers have a lot of exciting new projects underway as we get ready for ECHL action in October 2017. Two new hockey rinks in the Canal District, Railers Tavern behind the DCU Center, and reach 1,500 members. Memberships are on sale now by placing just a $50 deposit. For more information, visit RailersHC.com. Time to get all aboard the Railers train. <laughs> Welcome back. You know, this week the Assumption Greyhounds take on AIC. It's their last regular season game, and Assumption's already in the NE10 playoffs. So what do they have to play for, you might ask? Head coach Bob Chesney says there's still a lot to play for, and it's keeping the team's momentum heading into the postseason. Just a continuation of our momentum, like we always talk about. We don't want to be in a position where we take a step backwards, you know, as we're attempting to take a step forward. So I think that for us, we've only been playing it one way the entire year, and we're not going to change it up at, at this point of the game. So, uh, you know, this is still a very, very big game, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. You know, so um, you know, we're not, we're not taking our foot off the gas at all. We're just going to continue to play the way we play. We have to be able to spread the ball around a little bit. If we if we think we're going to line up and just pound the ball down their throats, that's not going to happen. But if we think we also can just sit around and spread it and, and throw it all day, that's not going to happen either. They're very good. They they know how to counter You know whatever it is that you're doing. They're, I think, the number one defense in the league or number two behind us in certain areas. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're really in a, a, a neat situation where this week for us, being able to, to really compete with one another again, you know, like we've been doing all year, is going to, you know, be worth its weight in gold when it's all said and done. It is our game of the week, Assumption and AIC. See all the action at 7 on Charter TV3. Speaking of momentum, the Worcester State Lancers just down the road coming off a big win on their senior day. Now Worcester State hoping to take that win and generate a couple more before the season is through. Great team win. We played four quarters of football today against a tough team, tough opponent. You know, they, they lined up and they wanted to run it down our throats, and I thought we played outstanding today. It means the world to me to get a win on uh, senior day. I love this team. Coming out here and winning your last game on a home field is unreal. You know, it's a great feeling, especially winning by a field goal. And when special teams came up huge today, you know, it's great to be involved in that. What does it mean to you to kind of finish the season strong and to get a win like this on senior day? Great moving forward because the kids that are coming here next year are going to look at a positive attitude, you know, like we're not a losing team. We're not going to give up at the end of the season. You know, we're going to keep working and keep moving forward. Our defense is, is uh, I like to think we're pretty good in short down situations, so we were ready for it. We knew we had to step up and make a big play, and uh, we're very proud of the guys, you know, getting some penetration, especially in those last couple plays, to, to really shut it down. And uh, I can't, you know, the team means the world to me. I cannot believe, you know, it's unbelievable. Things also going in the right direction down in Dudley. The Nichols Bison coming off another win. They are now four and four with two weeks left in their season. Nichols with a legitimate shot now to play for a postseason bid. I know for a lot of programs, you know, 500 is sort of, you know, mediocrity, but not for us and, and where we've been as a program of late. To be four and four after uh, you know eight games is quite an accomplishment of the coaches and the players. Throughout preseason, I thought we had you know kind of a special team. I didn't think we were gonna, you know, could we have competed for a, you know a conference title? I'm not sure, but I knew this is the best team I've had since I've been here. I think the kids have bought into the mindset that the, that us as a staff has put forth. You know, as far as the dedication, the discipline. Um, you know, not to say the other teams haven't had that. It's just I think these guys are a little bit more focused than some of the players that we've had in the past. The next two games, we have a you know a difficult challenge to go up to Maine. It's an overnight for our guys. The first time they've been away for an overnight uh, play up in a cold, raw environment up in Maine, and a team that you know although their record might not indicate it, they, you know they, they play very competitive football. So it's a very very scary game for myself and the staff. Um, I know Coach McSweeney will have their guys ready to go, but. You know, I think we will too. Okay, to the alumni dean's list. Now we begin with a Wachusett grad. Brandon Miller at UMass Dartmouth had 10 tackles against Western Connecticut. Joseph Angelini out of Blackstone Valley Tech playing at Mass Maritime. Five tackles against powerful Framingham State. Nabil Tokatli out of Doherty playing at WPI and having a good year. Six tackles and a sack with a fumble recovery in a shootout with Hobart. Trey Watson out of St. Peter Marion playing at Fitchburg State, also having a big year. Eight tackles and a fumble recovery against the Owls of Westfield State. And we saw Tyler Berry at Worcester State, the former Oxford star. Three receptions, 56 yards, couple big catches and a win over Plymouth State. 
and Matt Larrero, the former horseman from West Boylston, playing the defensive line for Worcester State, seven tackles in a gutty effort over Plymouth. Well, that'll do it this week for the Frenzy Extra from Assumption College. We hope to see you here on Saturday as Assumption takes on AIC. But first, we'll see you Friday night for playoff football on the Frenzy. Good night.